Okay, so here's the first one you sent. So we're um, graphing piecewise functions, and then we'll give the range after we find the function for that. So basically all this is is it's two functions, um, but we're only going to graph pieces of it. And so the first piece right here is going to be from when x is less than 1. And so whenever x is less than 1, we're going to plug it into this formula to figure out the y value. So we can make a little table. And we'll call this x, and we'll call this one y1, just to kind of keep track of it. And so I need to plug in some values less than 1. You know, like negative 3, that's less than 1. Negative 3 plus 4 is a positive 1. And then we need to plug in something else, like maybe 0. Plug in 0, 0 plus 4 is 4. Now, even though 1 is not included, we actually want to go ahead and plug that in. And when I plug in 1, 1 plus 4 is 5. I'm going to go ahead and circle that because that's on the border right there. So... These graphs are kind of small, but I think we can see it here that, like, at least I'm going to narrow it down a little bit. Um, let's see. It can't be, uh, it's not going to be able to be B or C. Um, or actually, hold on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I don't really like how they're doing the increments. I guess they're doing them in twos, but that's okay. But, um... But yeah, because you can see it's – actually, the answer is going to be A, but I'm going to go ahead and show you how to find the other part of the graph. It's just kind of hard to see without enlarging this. But anyways, you can see that there's an open circle right there, and that's that's this point right there. The one that – you know, because 1 is not less than 1, but the thing is if I were to plug in like, you know, 0.99, and then 0.99 plus 4 would be – 4.99 and then I could keep adding nines and it would just keep adding a nine on the back end and so you're getting really close to five but anyway so we got the open circle there so that's that graph right there and I don't see that on any of the other ones D has it except that it has a closed circle and so that would eliminate D as a possible answer but let's go ahead and graph the other part just so we can see the complete problem so on the other one we're going to plug in x here as long as x is larger than or equal to 1. We'll call this one y2. So I can plug in 1. 1 will work. 1 minus 4 is negative 3. I'm going to go ahead and circle it, though, also because it's a border point, which means I'm right up against the edge, right? And I'll plug in a couple more points. So let's see. I could plug in like a 3 and a 5. So let's see. 3 take away 4 is negative 1. Uh, 5 take away 4 is positive 1. And so you can see that that's going to line up with that part of the graph right there. And you can see the closed circle because this time it is included because the inequality sign says x can be greater than or equal to. And so that's why we have a closed circle there. Now, part B where it says find the range, well, if you look from bottom to top, everything's covered up, which means that the range... This is going to be from negative to positive infinity. Everything's covered up. Everything going down, everything going up. And then there's actually some double up in the middle, which is fine. So you're covering up some values twice, which, you know, not really a big deal. But everything's covered up below, everything's covered up above, and everything in the middle. So let's look at the next one you sent, which is the same idea. We are, except we have three of them. But other than that, like the concept has not changed. Um, so go ahead and graph the following function. Check your result using a graphing calculator. We'll, we won't worry about doing that part of it. Okay. So looking at this first function right here, we're going to plug in for x as long as x is less than or equal to negative 4. So once again, we'll call that one y1. So I need to plug in something less than or equal to negative 4. Well, I definitely need to plug in negative 4 which plus 2 would give me a negative 2. And once again, I'll circle that because that's going to be a border point. And then we need to plug in something less than negative 4, like, I don't know, negative 6. Um, and so let's see. That would give us 
a negative 4. So it looks like my x value is x becomes more negative, a bigger negative number. I'm getting a bigger negative result. So it looks like that kind of narrows me down to C right there because I can see that right there. It's a closed circle. And at, once again, I know it's hard without enlarging this. It's a little bit harder to see. But um, that's what we have going on here. Problem with B is it's an open circle at negative 4 down 2. So it can't be B. And then A and D, they're increasing as X decreases. So that's not going to work. But let's go ahead and uh, look at the other ones so we can finish this out. So next one is, this is kind of interesting, it's a constant function. It's just going to be negative 1 as long as x is somewhere between those two numbers. So we'll call that one y2. So let's see, I, I need to make sure I plug in my border points. So negative 4, I would get a negative 1, but that's a border point. Then let's plug something in the middle, like maybe 0. And I still get negative 1, it's just a constant function. Then let's see, let's plug in a 5, which is on the border. And I'll get a negative 1. And once again, I'm going to circle that just to remind myself it's a border point. And if you look at C, you can see yeah, all those values are coming back as negative 1. And my endpoints um, are open circles. And so I'm, I'm good to go there. Okay, the last one, we're going to plug in 1 fifth times x for all x values greater than or equal to 5. So we're going to plug in values greater than or equal to 5. So we'll start at 5. So 5 times a fifth would be a 1, right? 1 fifth times 5 is 1. And once again, that's a border point, so I'm going to circle it. Now it is included, though, so it will be a closed circle. You can see the closed circle right there. And then we want to pick, plug in some values bigger than um, 5. Probably want to pick multiples of 5 so that it can multiply by 1 fifth easily. So like 10... 15, and so on. So 10 times a fifth is 2. 15 times a fifth is 3. And you can kind of see that slow rise as x increases. So that's going to be C. All right, let's see. The next one, we're looking at transformations. And so we don't see this transformation um, too often, but we that transformation right there with the negative x is going to cause us to uh, reflect across um, the uh, y-axis. So we don't see that one too often. Um, and then we have a vertical transformation. Verticals always go last, and horizontals always go first. There wasn't a horizontal transfer, so we didn't have to worry about that one. But, um, okay. Okay. So the plus 1 will cause us to go up 1. So I'm going to go ahead and apply it to this graph right here. So reflect across the y-axis, go up 1. That was this point right there. Then let's see, this point right here will reflect across the y-axis and go up 1. Then we're going to, well, we're on the line of reflection, so nothing happens. And then we'll go up 1. And then, let's see, reflect across the y-axis and go up 1. And then the last point, reflect across the y-axis and go up 1. So I end up right there. And then if we play connect the dots, we end up with this. And once again, with them scaling, this can sometimes be a little tricky. So we just need to be careful. But yeah, it looks like it's C here. So, yep. That looks right. Yep, C. All right. And then you had another transformation one. This one has a little bit more going on. So here's the horizontal transformation. That's the one that you have to list first. So that's actually going to be to the right two. Then next, you have to do... Anything else bef before the vertical transformation, that plus 4 is vertical, so that's got to go last. So the times 2, you're multiplying that by the result once you plug in x. And our result is of the y value. So the y value is going to get multiplied by 2, or you might see it 
whenever they ask you to describe it, it's going to vertically stretch. It's going to be a vertical stretch. But I'm just going to go ahead and put multiply y by 2 because that's what we're going to actually do. And then last, we got the plus 4 that will be up 4. All right, so here we go. So go to the right 2. And then multiply y by 2. Well, y is 0 currently, so nothing happens. And then go up 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. All right, the next one, go to the right 2. Multiply y by 2. So y was 2, now it's 4. And then go up 4. So I actually end up all the way up here at 8. All right, then my next point here, I'm going to go to the right. 2, multiply y by 2, well y is 0, so nothing happens, and then go up 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, okay, and then my next point here, we're going to go to the right 2, multiply y by 2, so now it's negative 4, but then I go up 4, so I actually end up on that point, my next point I need to actually move, okay, so now I'm going to move this point to the right 2, Multiply y by 2, but y is 0 currently. And then we're going to go up 4, so we'll end up right up here. So we end up with this right there. So let's see if we can find that one. Um, I could see why you would have maybe picked A. It looks like maybe you went the, to the left instead of to the right. Let's see. Looks like it's going, yep, there we go. It's D. All right. Well, I hope uh, I hope this helps you out on these questions.